It's the Pain Exam Podcast with your host, David Rosenblum, MD. If you treat pain or have an interest in pain management, join us as we discuss painful disorders, alternative treatments, practice management, and more. Be sure to subscribe to the Pain Exam newsletter at painexam.com and review the podcast on Stitcher or iTunes. Our high-yield premium episodes are now available on the Pain Exam app with a premium subscription or access for free with a CME subscription at painexam.com. And now, without further ado, here's your host, Dr. Rosenblum. Welcome back and thanks for joining me. I uh, had a busy month. I did my two-day course in New York, which was great. Um, At the course, I was injected with... PRP into my knees, both of them. <laughs> Every time I do a course, it's an, it's another body part that's getting injected. It was just originally my knees, then my neck. Now it was my knees, neck, and lower back, um, which was done under ultrasound guidance. I had uh, an injection in the perifacet region and extra foraminal space in my neck, as well as in my lower back near the L5-S1 facet and my both of my knees. So if you haven't guessed it, I'm a big believer in regenerative medicine, especially PRP and BMAC. And um, I'm going to do another course in case you're interested. I did not set the date yet. I'm just waiting for my winter and spring calendar. And I'll get something on the boards, um, in the books, I should say. Anyway, speaking of boards, um, if you are a pain fellow, the boards are about a year away and you could subscribe to Pain Exam for a year. Additionally, I have ultrasound training in New York December 21st and January 11th. More dates will be released, as well as ultrasound-guided IV workshops in case you or your PA or nurse are interested in attending. And I am now offering uh, anyone who's interested in shadowing me in the pain office and watching me do injections, whether it's regenerative medicine or ultrasound, we can set that up, and I will try to make it so that you get CME credits. Usually the way I do that is giving you access to the online materials uh, for the day. So it's a great experience. Um, I've done many private sessions before. The alternative is I, me or another trained ultrasound doctor can come to you in your clinic and will observe you doing the shots and coach you through it. If it's in your clinic in your state, there's a good chance we won't be licensed to touch the patient. So you, you it's all it's all you. You get to do everything, and um, you have someone there looking over your shoulder, making sure that you do safe um, and proper care. Get, that you give safe and proper care. So there are lots of options if you really want to dive into the ultrasound world or get some experience with re, with regenerative medicine and. Um, you can just reach out to me on my website or email. It's um, info at nrappain.org or drosenbloom at rmcpain.com. Anyway, to get into today's episode, so there's a little story behind this. Um, my first, I don't really do house calls, however, um, my first um, house call was... Um, on a patient who had RSD. I was like a couple of years out of training, not even. And they were desperate. They, they, um, they, they begged us to come to do a house call on this patient who was suffering with RSD. I believe it was of her leg, CRPS. And what happened was... Um, I went there. I did my evaluation. This poor girl had a um, had to keep the temperature of her bedroom over 90 degrees. And I came from my office wearing a suit. And the whole family had to keep the house 90 degrees or else the cold would get to her and she would be in miserable pain, something I actually have not seen in my practice, such extreme heat alleviating pain but you know it's complex regional pain syndrome it's complex and it's not really well understood and there's lots of different ways it can present and uh, these patients really they're not you can't really put them all in the same box they're not identical anyway um, she went 
to Italy to do something called a scrambler therapy, which I'm sure by now many of you have heard of. And um, it helped her somewhat. It's for neuropathic pain. It's a device, which I'll get into soon. And it wasn't until a patient asked me about it recently that I decided to dive into this and talk more because this is now, this thing's been around for a while. Um, and there is some evidence as to its efficacy. Um, I don't believe it's reimbursed, or probably more of us would be doing it or knowing about it, but at least in the States. But anyway, um, I found a review article um, called The Efficacy of Scrambler Therapy in Chronic Neuropathic Pain, Pairwise and Dose Response Meta-Analysis. So, um, the scrambler is an electrocutaneous device, and these devices have emerged as possible options with promising results in multiple randomized controlled trials, but the long-term efficacy is unknown. In this article, they aim to evaluate the efficacy of scrambler therapy in chronic neuropathic pain reduction over time. They use multiple data sources, PubMed, Scopus, Cochrane, et cetera, and um, they found five placebo and three routine care controlled, randomized controlled trials that were selected. Two authors independently extracted the data, and it was pooled using a model under common parameter assumptions. And um, the, the, they, they concluded that there was, um, first of all, nobody withdrew from the trials due to adverse effects or lack of efficacy. E efficacy excuse me. There was high quality evidence that Scramble therapy reduced pain in short term with a mean difference of negative three points. The dose response meta analysis demonstrated a significant reduction in pain scores post treatment with a peak reduction at day 40. The effect of the scramble therapy remained below the baseline values for 90 days, although with limited certainty. This study is the first dose response meta analysis to assess the duration of efficacy of sc scrambler therapy. The results demonstrate a clinically significant and more sustained reduction in pain created by scrambler therapy compared to conventional treatments, and that it could be a safe and effective alternative for managing chronic neuropathic pain, which, as we know, is discomfort lasting longer than three months as a result of a lesion or disease of the peripheral or central somatosensory nervous system and affects up to 7% of the population. The A and C fibers are involved in the pathophysiology of chronic neuropathic pain, the latter is a slow transmitter, that's the C, and significant contributor to the chronic neuropathic pain because it participates in pain transmission at slower rates. There are three types of pain and treatment for each one of them um, that is necessary. Nociplastic pain, which is altered nociception but no tissue damage. Neuropathic pain, that's induced by neuronal damage. And nociceptive pain, the uh, chronic neuropathic pain can degrade the quality of life, and our traditional meds will, would be the antidepressants, tricyclic antidepressants, ser selective serotonin neuro uh, reuptake inhibitors, anti-seizure drugs such as pregabal and gabapentin, um, and they're really not adequate in many cases, unfortunately. Surgery and PT are prim primary non-pharmacologic treatments, but many patients um, do not adhere to the PT regimen. Um, I'll add to this, it's not in the article, marijuana can be an option as well. And just skipping towards the end of this article, um, just to reemphasize, the results show that pain gradually gets reduced with scrambler therapy with a three-point drop in the pain scale by day 40 and scores below the baseline levels until day 90. Uh, they imply that the scrambler therapy is better than placebo and may outperform traditional treatments as well in providing long-term relief and it seems to have minimal side effects. So w what is scrambler therapy, right? We're, we're talking about this, but I didn't really define it yet. So basically, it's a method of chronic pain relief um, from 2003, where um, the same year that Giuseppe Maria Neo published the results of a small clinical trial among 11 terminal cancer patients suffering from drug-resistant chronic visceral pain. And all the patients responded positively to the treatment with a significant reduction in pain scores. In the second trial of 226 patients with neuropathic pain, 80% reported 50% reduction. Since then, several case reports and studies describe the use of scrambler, th scrambler therapy for various kinds of pain. 
So the creator, Dr. Marineo, who is a biophysicist, claims that the chronic pain is a consequence of a phenomenon produced by persistence in time of pain pathway activation, which is a typical condition of neuropathies. This process results in loss of linear linearity in the cause, the effect relationship and that characterizes the physiological acute pain, which is protective, and creates new type of nonlinear behavior of the pain system that tends to self-sustain an anom anomalous response to painful and non-painful stimuli. Marineo proposes that the entire pain process can be controlled by intervening on the afferent information aspect of pain, the variable that characterizes and mainly regulates every activity of the nervous system and represents its natural cybernetic expression. In short, the, the scramble therapy's active principle is information control that manipulates the modulation or remodulation of the pain system and its physiologic, physiological or pathological responses in, the, in line with plastic properties of the nervous system. More specifically, the scrambler therapy unit is composed of five electrode stimulating channels that, through the surface receptor of C fibers, replace endogenous pain information with a synthetic one of non pain or normal self that travels through the same pain pathways to the brain. Through plasticity within the brain's network, mediating the perception of pain, a series of treatments retrain the brain so that the area of concern is no longer considered painful. Marineo proposes that his function, his functioning principle, like its neurophysiological target that uses receptors of C fibers or places the chronic pain information rather than attempting to block its ascending path. An in-depth analysis on these differences is described in the, in the link. So anyway, um, it's been compared to the spinal cord stimulator, which is another intervention, as you probably know, um, to treat chronic pain. And the scrambler therapy is um, a therapy that the electrodes are not placed at the site of the actual pain, but instead placed nearby at a preserved sensory location. The dermatoma location is to feed this non-pain confusing information into the regular nervous circuit using the peripheral nerves rather than the ass assessing the spinal cord like a spinal cord stimulator. The intensity of the stimulation is adjusted according to the patient comfort, and if the patient is correct, and if the placement is correct, the pain will usually be replaced by the scrambler device sensation, which is often described as pleasant, vibratory, or humming. Up to the full set of the five set electrodes can be used to treat the areas of the pain. The device is allowed to run for 30 to 45 minutes once the electrodes have been optimally positioned and stimulation intensely correctly regulated. After a, a session's completion, patients may report a soothing sensation and note that the pain has been reduced or disappeared. The benefit in this other article, which will be referenced, they, they say it lasts for a relative short period of time. When the treatment is reinitiated the next day, the same process happens, but the benefit generally lasts longer for a few hours. In most cases, the treatment has been given properly. The session, um, the, the non-pain time will be extended post-session. Uh, post the duration of post-treatment relief classically lengthens with continued treatments. Ideally, the benefit is maintained throughout the entire day. Usually, a scramber therapy is given for a total of 10 treatment sessions on consecutive weekdays, if feasible, although some patients need fewer and some patients need more treatments. Pain relief can be expected to persist for weeks to months after the treatment is stopped. When patient is relapsed, booster sessions can be administered and may take only one or two boosters to reestablish the benefits of the previously occurred and this may, may last for substantial periods of time, often months or longer. It's operator de dependent, and really it's, um, the success is highly dependent on the ability to eliminate pain during each single session without any significant patient discomfort. Failure to completely resolve the pain in a, a treated area or have a VAS less than one during each treatment session may lead to less satisfactory results. Experience has confirmed that more Expert operators can eliminate pain during scrambler therapy as opposed to um, when less experienced ones have failed. Um, this may also explain why certain studies are, are um, it's heterogeneous, the, the, the data. So 
Um, I mean, you could argue that for regenerative medicine, right? We don't all use the same PRP quality, and not all of us have the same skill level with, when it comes to injecting uh, targets. So um, things can be operator dependent. So interpret everything with some caution. Um, I think this is cool stuff. I think it's really interesting that the scrambler, I think maybe I'll get one. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you guys should too. Um, Cause I'm just thinking of a particular patient who has neuropathic foot pain and he's miserable and he's, he's um, not apprehend. He's very apprehensive about the spinal cord stimulator and he's failed everything else. So anyway, um, hope to see you guys at the conferences. Uh, next conference coming up is NICIP, which is a great one. It's in New York. I'm going to try to make it, but I might not be able to. So I will um, probably have my assistant there working my table. And um, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks for listening. And please share the podcast with your colleagues. Take care and good luck. Dr. Rosenblum is here solely to educate, and you are solely responsible for all your decisions and actions in response to any information contained herein. These podcasts are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a physician to a particular patient or specific ailment. You should regularly consult a physician in matters relating to yours or another's health. You understand that this podcast is not intended as a substitute for consultation with a licensed medical professional. Copyright 2017, David Rosenblum, all rights reserved. No part of this publication may be reproduced produced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any form or by any means, electronic, mechanical, recording, or otherwise, without the prior written permission of the author.